Good morning. The purpose of this video is to help you complete this uh, laboratory exercise, titration of sodium bicarbonate with hydrochloric acid. Uh, we're going to perform that experiment here in the uh, uh, classroom and I will make sure that you guys have the data that we collect so that you can complete the worksheet for this lab which looks like this. We'll be weighing three samples of sodium bicarbonate and then titrating them and that will allow us to complete this worksheet. So this is the burette that we're using today. It is a 50 milliliter burette. At the very top is zero and it is graduated down towards the bottom at 50. Below that it has a valve called a stopcock. When the stopcock handle is up and down, the hole through here is also up and down and that valve is open. When that stopcock valve is turned sideways, the hole is across and fluid can't flow through it. So to prepare this for use, I use a small funnel and I kind of put my finger against it to let the air out as I'm pouring and I pour in a small amount of the titrant I'm using. I'm going to take some of that titrant and rinse it through the valve. And then I'm going to make sure that all the sides of the burette are washed down by rotating this as I pour that titrant into the sink. By using my titrant to rinse the burette, I can make sure that any residual liquid in there is the titrant that I'm going to use. Once that happens, that valve is closed. I'm going to fill the burette up just above the zero mark. Trying to stop on that zero is difficult. So if I plan to fill up a little bit above it, I can adjust it downwards and uh, get right on that zero. So there the burette is filled. Here's the zero mark and there's my liquid level. Once I've filled my burette above the zero mark, I like to use a pipette to adjust that level just until the bottom of the meniscus is at the zero line. Once the burette is ready to use, put it in the burette clamp by squeezing these, putting it between the blue knobs there, and releasing. Once I've placed the burette in the burette clamp, I want to adjust the height so that it is just above the flask that I'm going to be using. I want to be able to shake that flask and move it around without bumping the tip of that pipette, a burette, and possibly breaking it. And the last little detail is I like to put a piece of white paper under my flask so that I can see the color of my indicator in that flask. So the lab directions say to weigh between 1.8 and 2.2 grams of sodium bicarbonate for each titration. And so we're going to do that now. Weighing onto a, a piece of paper to help us uh, transfer the solid. That sample weighs 1.983 grams. And we'll transfer it into the first of our analyte flasks. And that one is 2.104 grams. Two 
2.168 grams. And here is that information entered into our worksheet. The mass of sodium bicarbonate for the first sample, 1.983. For the second sample, 2.104, and for the third sample, 2.168. I've also entered the concentration of my titrant up here, 0 0.875 moles per liter HCl. I have filled my burette after rinsing it as we demonstrated in class, and now I'm adjusting to Make sure it's right at the zero mark. That's the bottom of the meniscus. And there it is, right there. I'm going to add some indicator to my flask. Just two or three drops. And then some extra water to help dissolve my solids. And now I'm ready to titrate. I know it should take close to 30 milliliters of the titrant, so I'm going to run the first oh, 25 or so in rather rapidly. It does turn pink, but it should turn clear again as that reaction happens and as the rat last of the baking soda dissolves our pink color should return I still see a dissolved solid in there there we return to our yellow color I am going to proceed more cautiously now Currently at about 26 milliliters. A little piece of white paper in there helps me to see the color and distinguish when it is turning. I like it right there. I'm going to rinse down any spatter up here that may contain unworked, unreacted un uh, sodium bicarbonate just to make sure. And yes, that color right there is my end point. Again, using my little piece of white paper to help me distinguish the numbers there. It looks like I am below 27 by three little marks. So it is 27.3 milliliters that we used. Okay, this is the second sample. I've already refilled my burette. I've added my indicator and some water to help dissolve it. So now I'm just going to run a bunch of uh, titrant in there all at once. This is a slightly larger sample than our first one, so I can go pretty rapidly down until I'm about a milliliter from the end. And it looks like that is our end point right there. So our end point is at 28.9 milliliters. And this is the third sample. And once again, the Viorette's already been refilled. Indicators added. Some water's already added. Yeah, so here we go. 
Oh, looky there. Okay. And that is our final endpoint right there. And that is 29. It's between 0.8 and 0.9, so I'm going to call it 28.85 milliliters. So here is our collected data recorded on the data sheet. Note that I converted the milliliters to liters as requested by the worksheet. So 27.3 milliliters is 0 0.0273 liters. 28.9 is 0 0.0289 and this last one was 0 0.0285 liters. So once that data has been collected you can follow the calculations as uh, described in the worksheet in order to complete this uh, titration. I've blocked off the calculations here to give you a chance to do them. Down here is the results of those calculations you can check your work against. For sample 1, the uh, mass variation was 1.19%. For sample 2, the variation was 0.965%. And for sample 3, the variation was 1.21%. At the conclusion of your lab, any remaining titrant in your burette is disposed of in the sink. The burette is rinsed with distilled water. Leave the stopcock open and put your burette back in the clamp upside down like that so it can drain and it's clearly indicated that that's been cleaned and prepared for the next person to use.